Live. Right. Welcome back to Senate Government Operations Committee, Thursday, March 11th. We're going to have a discussion with Michelle Childs from Le Legislative Council about some of the proposed changes the committee is considering to the cannabis bill. Um, cannabis bill is S25, if I remember correctly, right? So again, Michelle, just take us to actually make, make sure we got the, the paper. Yeah, I just emailed it. Sorry, I didn't I got it. do that earlier. I Y'all are my fifth committee today. So I'm uh, sometimes I get a little <laughs> confused about what I've sent where. You've saved the best for last. Yes. Um, and Gail, can I share my screen? We can look at it here if you've emailed it to us. We can just look at it. I our, have what, whatever your preference is. Yeah, yeah, we like just looking at our iPads or our, our oh, computers. Oh, okay. Well, that's fine with me. Um, so, uh, so I'm going to take you through uh, this, and you'll see. You know, it's not quite done as I um, had mentioned to you a little earlier. Uh, I had drafted it, um, and then um, I had sent it to. Uh, Senator White yesterday, but you know, because she's sick, she wasn't able to take a look at it. So I'll I'll clarify for you the areas where I still need some input, from folks. Um, so you should have uh, you know, this is I should have updated the header, which I didn't, but uh, what it says right now is draft 1.1, 1 .1, um, which I might. I'll, I'll Gail, I'll connect with you because you probably have the uh, 1.1. On the website now for me, so I need to change that draft number, but I'll correct it with you after we finish up. Okay, that sounds good. I've been having problems with the headers not automatically updating. Um, okay, so we're looking at, uh, and I just put it in the form of an instance of amendment. The, obviously, it's not an amendment because you don't have jurisdiction of the bill. Um, but the first instance of amendment is we've already talked about that, and I don't think we need to go over that. But that's your your bit about the um, if you, if the towns don't vote by a certain date, um, then uh, uh, then they need to then it's, they're going to be considered an opt in for retail sales. Um, I did talk with judiciary uh, this morning a little bit about the amendments that you had already agreed to. And I did talk to them about this and I, I'll probably make a little tweak to this. They brought up the um, a concern that it sounds as though if the town doesn't vote exactly on March 8th, that that would apply. And the intention is that if they haven't uh, voted on or before. And so I'll just make a, small, a little technical tweak to that. Sure. An instance of amendment. Um, is on page uh, two. Oh, sorry, then, Michelle, may I just oops. ask a question? Sure. Uh, so it's usually, oh, so I see you're giving a little leeway after town meeting because town meeting that year will be on the 1st of March. Is it, I, you know, it yeah. might, it might be that that's what it was. I think what I, I looked it up. The version was on that Which town meeting is always the first Tuesday of of the uh, right of, of March. So I and guess you so know Tucker had Tucker had done this language, and so uh, it might have been. And I wasn't part; I wasn't in committee at that time when y'all were discussing it. So it might have been that you decided that you wanted a little time after. So I'll just put prior, yeah. or I'll it, tweak it. it. But well thank before. you for thank you for pointing that out. Yeah. And um, and because but, but I have right, my. That, that's a good thing though, right? We want it to be a little after town meeting. I, I, I don't know if, if that's the intention. I mean, I'm happy. I think it's fine to be a little after. I just, if it's town meeting, town meeting is on the first. Right. And I'll, I'll just, I know what your intent is. So I'll just, I'll think and take care of it. So don't worry. Um, also, Senator, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, was, actually, go ahead. I think you're incorrect. I have the 2023 calendar open. Yeah. Town meeting day is on March 7th in 2023. So that's probably why he has the eight there. Ah, okay. So I knew we couldn't be wrong because I knew we talked about it. Yeah. Right. So I would probably say something like, you know, like prior, you know, if they don't do, but I got I'll I'll look at it and I'll I'll clarify. Long before. Yeah. Thank you, Brian. I was just getting around to clarifying. 
the date. Ugh, so frustrating to not find it. Okay, let's move forward. So the section two, again, this is a uh, language that you've already looked at and, and said you were okay with. So it's requiring the, um, uh, it's, it's moving the, the board members from the committee, advisory committee members from 12 to 13 with the addition of the uh, representative from the dispensaries. That's in subsection H and then uh, right up above there in subdivision uh, C4 is that the member could be removed for cause by either the remaining two members of the board or by a two thirds vote of the advisory committee. Yeah. Good. Okay. Um, also on uh, this section on page four, um, May the advisory committee is supposed to be seated by, by May 1st of this year. Um, and you guys have decided to put it at April 1st. Huh. So we don't have a board yet, but we may have an advisory board. <laughs> um, so, and that the Secretary of Agriculture is going to convene the first meeting on or before the 15th. So the third instance of amendment um, is tweaking the section that is in S25 as introduced, um, but this portion only has the fee bit in it because I've done some additional sections that are dealing with the, um, with the business development fund. Um, so you'll see here is just that the uh, control board is to propose a plan for reducing or eliminating license fees. And I highlighted this language because I know this is a difficult one for everybody, but the language that's in there now is used because that's the phrase that's used currently in the law with regard to in a number of different places around technical training and um, of various other things in Act 164. Um, I can make this uh, whatever you want, but I wanted to get here from you specifically how you want that language to read because I felt like I kind of got a lot of pieces, but I wasn't entirely, when I went to kind of put pencil to paper, I, I wasn't entirely clear on the scope of what you wanted this to be. Um, uh, I can come back, I can just walk you through the whole thing and then we can come back on these sticking points if that's... Sure. Or sure. we can talk about them each one. Sure. You want to go through? Okay. Um, so then moving on to the fourth instance of amendment. Um, this is creating a, uh, a new chapter, uh, chapter 39 in Title VII. Um, so right after your, you have a few other cannabis chapters now in Title VII. Um, and that's where you have, uh, you have a, a general one for cannabis control board. You have one for uh, cannabis establishments. You have another for the medical program and dispensaries. And so this would be adding one for social equity programs. Um, so we start out with a definition section. These weren't absolutely necessary to put that in there, but we're going to have to add on to definition. So I wanted to hold the place from a statutory standpoint. Um, because we're going to have to add definitions like social equity applicant in there. So top of page five, so the new section for the fund. So it's establishing the Cannabis Business Development Fund. The C subsection B line four, the fund is comprised of 3% of gross sales made by integrated licensees prior to October 15th, 2022. I chose that date because the retailers are uh, begin to get licensed on October 1st. And so I thought that kind of is that, so the intention there um, from my understanding was that when it's the period prior to the other retail stores coming online and selling. And so I just picked that date, but you can make that date whatever you want. Um, with a maximum contribution of $50,000 per integrated licensee. So there are, as you know, five, current uh, dispensary licenses. So there could be a maximum of five integrated licenses. And so you could potentially see $250,000 going into that fund um, from existing dispensaries. And then the second one is just monies allocated to the fund by the General Assembly. And so Senator White 
had discussed an appropriation. And um, again, that's one of the things I wanted to talk about. She had thrown around a variety of numbers and um, I, I realized that no matter what number you pick, it's going to appropriations and they'll pick their own number. So, um, but um, you can- would that keep, I'm sorry, would that keep it from crossover though? No. No, it just has to be out of Committee of Jurisdiction. Oh, that's right, that's right. Okay, it has right, to be right. out of Senate Judiciary tomorrow, and then it'll go to finance, and then it'll go to appropriations. Right, okay, I should remember that. That's okay. Um, so you see subsection C on line nine, so the fund is to be used for the following purposes, to provide low interest rate loans and grants to social equity applicants to pay for ordinary and necessary expenses to start and operate a licensed cannabis establishment, uh, and two, to pay for outreach. This hasn't been edited, just a little FYI. So don't worry too much on the typos. Um, and two, to pay for outreach that may be provided or targeted to attract and support equity applicants. And then three, necessary costs incurred in administering the fund. And so I'm using this term social equity applicants. And then there's obviously the question, what, who's a social equity applicant? And there's not a definition in there, but this goes to a section I'll, I'll get to in a, in a moment where you're, you're tasking the advisory committee with coming up for the criteria uh, for a social equity applicant. And then what they'll do is they'll recommend back to you and then that'll get incorporated into this definition section in here. I have a question. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you talk about providing um, pay for ordinary necessary expenses to start and operate a licensed cannabis establishment, when I hear the word establishment, I think of a store, a retail yeah. store. But great mind. You know, would, would, this, would this also include a grower, the, the cultivator, those kinds of things? It does. Um, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the word establishment does not mean that. But when I see that word, I think of a store. I no, had the it, same it, question, Anthony. It means any of the licensees, and it is okay. defined in a, in the cannabis chapter. All right, I mean, that's what I thought. I figured you yeah. knew what you were doing. I try. <laughs> um, so, uh, so section nine eighty eight. Uh, so, as we discussed uh, earlier in the week, ACCD uh, is to establish a program using funds from the Cannabis De Business Development Fund for the purpose of providing financial assistance, loans, grants, and technical assistance to social equity applicants. Um, so again, it's, it's just kind of the framework for it because uh, on your last committee discussion around this, you were kind of like, well, let's just kind of ask ACCD to establish the program. We don't need to come up with all the bells and whistles and all the details at this point. Um, and so this is um, this can obviously be expanded at any time um, if, if they start to if they would like. Um, section five. Uh, this is where the you're directing the advisory committee in consultation with the board to develop criteria for social equity applicants um, for a purpose of obtaining the loans and grants um, and. The question I had was, when do you want the board reporting back to the General Assembly um, for this? So, you know, this just is one of the many uh, kind of questions we have about a lot of the stuff around the cannabis thing is, is there's a lot of reporting back to the legislature, but we don't know how long y'all are going to be around this year. Um, so... Uh, yes, so that's a think? good point. Yeah, I don't know what to say. <laughs> that's two of us. <laughs> so I'll keep I'll keep going and we can circle back. <laughs> okay. So, but uh, Michelle, this in number, you're in uh, on line seven, right? Yes. So it's, it, it, is it the, it looks like it says the advisory committee, not the board. Is it the board? The advisory committee is developing the criteria oh, in consultation with the board, but I just had the board reporting to you rather than right. the advisory right. committee. You know, they're not state employee. I just right, right. No, I, 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 I missed that piece. I sure. just, um, you know, the it, yeah, it's a that's a good question. Is and you know when when 
are we expecting people to take it up and do anything with it? That's, I think, the question. I mean, you want the report before any uh, uh, debate and discussion and action might be possible. So, yeah, I think that's a question mark still. Do we can we receive reports if the legislature is not in session? Oh, we do all the time. Yeah. You can. You just aren't in session to be right. able to then enact the, the yeah, legislation right. that you would need. Right. So you can certainly do. You can receive yeah. it. And um, and then you know you could put that it's that they do that um, you know they report to you in the fall and then when I think about if you because people I'm just trying to think about if they're if they're applying nobody's going to be applying until the spring of next year so if you did receive the information you needed in the fall you know and just kind of right out of the gate in January uh you know added in the criteria for the social equity applicants on you know budget adjustment or whatever's moving early on um then uh you know you you could have that in place um other than that i just don't really it's just really just like throw in a dart you know in terms yeah. of trying to guess when you guys will will be here will you be here in well August? or September or I, I think there are two things in play here one is when we might be able to take action on it and b when we think with a cannabis control board and advisory board that haven't even met yet haven't even been appointed yet when they could actually be effectively up and running enough to do this work so I think actually the later <laughs> we yeah. give them the better and but it also gives us an opportunity and often the legislature a committee, particularly in a non-election year, will meet in preparation before the session, and they could actually take action on stuff before the session starts. So, yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, I was just saying if you know if you make it late enough, so like you know November first, the you know the committee of jurisdiction might be able to meet and actually take some action on it. Um, but I think given that they haven't even formed themselves to do any of the stuff that they're supposed to do, that they, and they have a lot of stuff they have to do before they get to this, I, I would say uh, late October or November 1. Yeah, I was actually going to, I agree with everything you just said, and I, I was going to actually say December, because that's when people are beginning to think about returning to the state house or to the legislature. So Middle of December. Yeah. If you get a report in July or August, it's like you're at the beach, you know, and like you don't really read the report that closely. And by the time December rolls around, you're thinking more about what your priorities are, what you're going to do when you get back to the, to the state house and whatnot. So I, I would actually say sometime as late as it could be December 1st or December 15th or something like that. Also, so, I think whatever we put in, the bill is going to move through the house again and all that. So there'll be time to change these dates. So we might have a better like, idea when we're going to be around come, you know, once May comes around. Then let's go for your idea. Let's go with December 1st. Well, I just, oh, go ahead. Brian. Yeah, uh, I thought, and maybe I've missed it, that we talked about revolving uh, loans, um, but that's not in here anywhere. We did, you're right. Right, I can add that. And I'm, because I'm, I'm not your economic development person, I don't know if I would just say a revolving loan fund or if there's certain language I use for revolving loan fund, but I can check. Okay, thank you. Kim. Or, or you can put some. Keisha? Um, I mean, I just feel like, I feel like price is right rules are better to start with where you kind of do it before you might need it rather than wait and give people mentally a lot of time and then go, oh my gosh, we are going to be back in August or September. And we really could have acted on that otherwise. Um, I know we're shortening their time frame to consider it, but I don't know. I just feel like we're, we're losing a lot of time. So you're saying if we were going to be here in August, we should have them do it in August, as an example. Yeah, like, and maybe we start with it on the early end, so they start mentally thinking, well, you know, they could, I, I don't know, you know, just could, could we yeah. even get together for a day if we think it's really critical 
for the rest of this work to happen that we receive the report and make some decision. I don't yeah, know. But, it's, but the, Michelle can speak to the amount of work that once they are even established and have met, I mean, it is unclear they will even have met before mid-April or May at the earliest. Yeah. I mean, you know, they have a lot of rules to set in place, right? I mean, Michelle, they have a ton of work to do to get going. And, and right. And, and so the board certainly does. And yeah. because you've kind of looped in the advisory committee working with them, there, there, there is a, a, a really heavy lift, but I, I certainly understand what Senator Ron's talking about. And I mean, I would say that if you did do, um, if you did do like a fall date, and then as we, you know, let's say it's May, and you know the decision is to adjourn and come back in August and be here in August and September. Um, you know, there's certainly nothing that prevents you. I mean, there's going to be a constant dialogue between the General Assembly and the board because there's got there's got to be. There's so many moving parts on all of this stuff that you guys are going to have to work in partnership a lot. There's nothing that keeps you from saying, "Hey, we didn't think we were going to be here in September, but we are." you guys move that a little bit up on your to-do list and get us something so we can enact it for you in September and do that. I mean, because it's going to be in their interest. They're going to want the clarity on it. Um, so, I mean, that's an option. So you don't kind of hamstring them saying, well, get it done by, uh, you know, May 15th when we don't really know, you know, which is, a pretty Herculean task, um, especially because with the delay in the board, remember the board, then once the board is seated, they still have to hire staff. Um, I mean, so, uh, so there's, you know, there's, there's a whole thing. So I don't know whether or not that holds any appeal is if you picked a fall date, you know, but you know, you have lines of communication and if it did look that you were going to be back here in the fall that you could see whether or not they'd be willing to uh, present you with that information earlier but I, I, I think it's a shot in the dark anyway so why don't we just say October 15th I mean you know I don't know it's it's it's, it's so arbitrary right now. They have so much work to do before they can even get to this. I, Did you say October? Yeah, I mean, yeah, October. For that. That's good. October 15th is a good round date after taxes are due, <laughs> right? <laughs> for those of us who extend often. Okay, so is that October 15th? Sure, sure. We'll get changed anyway. Trust me. Okay. Um, I'll have to go over to the house and they'll be like, why'd they set that date? <laughs> and right. Yeah, we could go tell them we picked it out of a hat. <laughs> um, and just so you know, uh, um, uh, I so staff prefers those earlier dates. We, we don't love getting reports in December because uh, right. People don't read them right away, and then they do, and then they put in their draft and requests, and it's the holidays, and we have a hard time getting a hold of people and all of that other kind of stuff. So we we like to not push things to you know. I, ideally, I try to avoid mm -hmm. ever writing something that I know is coming back to me to write up um, after November because <laughs> uh, it's you know we start um, especially the second year of the biennium where you, where you have earlier drafting deadlines. And folks have to, you know, kind of hit the ground running in January. Um, we like to kind of get things teed up a little earlier. So, I hear that. Okay. Okay. Um, sorry, my screen's frozen a little bit. Hmm. Can you still see the draft? Yeah. It's not allowing me to scroll. Let me um, let me get out of it and and then do it again and see if that'll help. Or let's see. Nope. 
Um, okay, well, uh, my screen is frozen. Sorry about that. Uh, your, your mouse wasn't, but like you can't. It's all right, I'm looking on it by your- Yeah, phone. it just won't, it won't. Um, hmm. Well, I guess I can just do that, okay. My, um, okay, uh, so I think what well, we are on eight nine eighty eight. So, um, oh, sorry, it's my mouse that's not working. I think we have it on our emails anyway, Michelle. Okay, yeah. here we go. We have okay. it right here. It's All right, in, great. We're in the last thing. And it, yes, it, oh, right. It, so we already did section five. So appropriation. I hope I, I, I didn't uh, um, make a big mistake here, but the, the, I don't know. I didn't know how much money to put in there. So maybe I probably should have gone lower and then you could bump bumped me up. But I, I there were lots of numbers that were kind of tossed out there by the chair at different points. I don't, and so I, I don't know what you want to do in terms of the appropriation. You could wait and have Senate appropriation, Senate appropriations at that section, or you could put this in. You could, with a number, knowing that they're going to change it. I, I would leave it there and see what you know, see what Jeanette thinks. And I, again, it's it's. <laughs> it, particularly if it's a revolving fund, it's slightly different than if it's a set fund, if it's a one-time expense or an ongoing. I, I think that it's unclear what should be put in there. So why don't we leave it for the moment and let, I mean, unless I, everybody has an idea. I, I, I agree with Senator Clarkson. Kind of a crapshoot. Okay. So is that Seven is uh, the transfer of the medical program to the board from DPS um, uh, several months earlier than is provided in current law. So it's those programs are supposed to shift over to the board uh, March 1st of next year. And at that time, there are there's a whole new uh, there's two new chapters that are regulating the registry and the dispensaries, and those take effect March 1st. And then as long as uh, the board can catch up with the timeline, then they should have the rules completed by that time as well. And so March 1st is when the program will start, start operating under the new statutes and rules, but you can move them over earlier. It just means that when you move them, um, they're still going to operate under the existing old statutes and rules that were adopted by the Department of Public Safety, even though they're now will be governed by the board, if that makes sense. But I'm guessing you guys have a th have had experience doing this in GovOps before. This is the first time I'm, I've ever done something like that. But my understanding is you guys have done this a few times. So so they would continue to operate under the old rules until the new rules are written, though. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we've done that a little bit. Yep. So um, in ag too. yeah. Yep. Yep. And so um, I just have a placeholder there on the positions because I was waiting to hear from JFO. My understanding is that there's three positions that are dedicated to the medical marijuana program, um, but I just need I just need a little information from them about about that, and so I'll add that in. So, um, just Sorry. for reference, uh, Michelle, mm -hmm. the latest bill where we're moving positions from the Department of Health to the Department of uh, Public Safety in the division of uh, the Department of Public Sur Safety in the division of Fire Safety is in our Rental Health and Safety Bill in Senate Economic Development, S-79. So uh -huh. if you want to have David constructed that, that oh, is- Oh, sure, that's great. That's the most current language on moving moving people from a department to another department. That is great. I um, We do, we, uh, we're always checking with all the other attorneys to see who's doing- so, uh, and check, if we can 
Right. Because no one, no sense reinventing the wheel. Um, a absolutely not. So David can give you that. Okay, that's good. I've been um, a lot of this stuff. Obviously, with is is kind of stuff David works on more. But I I know how busy everybody is, so I've been a little reluctant to be asking my colleagues to review my work here. But um, so subsection B is just what we talked about, which is the registry is just going to continue to be governed by Chapter 86 and Title 18 until those other statutes um, take effect on March 1st um, and hopefully the new rules as well. Good. And then this repeal is there are two sections in Act 164 that talk about moving the, the program um, over on March 1st. And so I had to repeal those. Okay. So I think I have all the issues in here. Can you think of anything that you discussed that you wanted in here that I might have missed? I, I think this is great. And if we come up with others, we have the house yep. to lobby. But wasn't there something, I agree, but wasn't there something that we skipped over a couple of minutes ago? Uh, the dates, the, the positions. The... I thought there was something that we just nodded our heads and said, well, we'll come back to it later. Now, I'm not oh, sure yeah, I was going to come back to the highlighted stuff. I was just wondering if there was a, I don't know, an issue or something that I didn't include in here that you thought maybe I. No, I don't think so. I think this I is think, good. I think this is great. Okay. Thank you. So I think, so yeah, so going back to section three and um, you know, I, I the language that's on lines 12 and 13 is there for consistency with the current act, but it, it doesn't necessarily have to be the same as what's in there. And I know that probably what's gonna be happening over the next couple of years certainly is kind of an evolution of some of these um, uh, the, the identification of certain communities or individuals um, with respect to, uh, to this program. And so you can say, you know, for reducing or eliminating license fees and then um, putting in there, you know, whomever you want, the language that's just in there is just because that's all, what's already used. Okay. In the Where is it used? It is used in um, uh, providing, you know, I'd, I have to do a little search in there, but it's used uh, around, I think, uh, preferences and licensing. Mm. Um, although, you know what, let me actually, let me see if I can pull up, let me pull up. Oh, I can't, I don't wanna show you that. I'm gonna stop share just so you don't see all here are all the other senators' secrets. Um, Gosh, when you share, my uh, video freezes up. So that's why oh. I close the video. Oh, hmm. you can't see my screen right now, right? No, I'm no. We're we're looking at the draft on your email that you sent us. Yeah, that's why I, I don't need it to be shared. So that language is already in other sections of this same bill. Yeah, I'm having a little trouble with my program, so it's not really it's not being very cooperative. Um, let's see if it'll let me do it. Well, well, I don't know if it's like a thing yeah. floating, and I can just say what is like my contention with it. I it. it it seems, so one thing I'm confused about is it said individuals who have historically been impacted. So I thought we were trying to say individuals who come from groups that have historically been marginalized or impacted. Cause I'm wondering if we actually mean they themselves, you know, had to have been impacted. And then what do we mean by impact? It, I understand there's a difference if they are someone who's been incarcerated versus somebody who, you know, might have, who's black, who might have grown up in a community that was constantly depleted by 
the over incarceration of people related to cannabis prohibition and legalization and you know criminalization i should say so i'm just i if this language exists elsewhere i think i have a problem with it there too i, I just anyone could say they've been impacted by cannabis prohibition so i don't know where the intent was behind how we define that that's what i'm struggling with but I think in the end, it almost has to have something to do with that individual or it doesn't make any sense. I, I don't know. Yeah, but I think what I hear you saying, I think is that it's not necessarily like this person was, was impacted and went to jail, but this person is from a community that has been impacted which from which people may have gone to jail unjustly and whatnot. So it's more like they should be coming from licensing fees for individuals who, from communities who have historically been disproportionately impacted. Right. Something like that, broadening it out a little bit. So it's not, and I, I don't have to have been arrested. Exactly. Un, unfairly. Because right. also the way it's written, you could argue, let's say I, I, I was not in this case, but let's say I had been um, arrested unjustly. I could qualify, although I'm clearly not from a disadvantaged community. Right. Yeah, we, we had talked about we're trying to say people who've been incarcerated and have struggled to make up for that economically and or people who are come from BIPOC communities where we know there was a vastly disproportionate and sort of institutionalized discrimination and criminalization in those communities. That's what I thought our intent was. And I just this still feels really broad or just really confusing. Yeah, I think you're right about the intent. I think if you said uh, just what what Keisha said, so for individuals of communities that have historically been disproportionately impacted by cannabis prohibition, because the thing is, is that, um, and I, I'm 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 guessing or uh, that at some point either the sometime soon either the legislature or the board is going to recommend to you kind of a fleshing out of of what this means. I mean, the board's gonna have to figure this term out anyway. And I, I, I always thought that this term because it's used in the existing law was something that the board was going to, uh, to detail out in rule and the, be part of the process. Um, but you can have, I think if you add, you know, for individuals of communities who have historically been disproportionately impacted and then I'll pull up for some reason, I can't pull it up right now, just technical issue, but um, I'll pull it up where it is exists in other places in Act 164, and I'll email it to you. And then that way, especially for Senator Rahm, if you, you know, are interested in just adding that of communities to places in existing law to, to make that consistent with this, then I drop those in as an additional amendment, either as an individual or as part of the committee's recommendation. Right. I think, that's, I, that I think you're correct is that, I mean, the, the issue is that I think there, there, some people do have concerns saying, talking about individuals who themselves have been impacted, mm -hmm. the people right. who may not, or they're uh, you know, maybe yeah. maybe weren't incarcerated or arrested for something or some, but there's obviously impacts on them because it's literally their community or it's their mm -hmm. family or they're part of um, a racial group or whoever it is that that is impacted. So um, I get what I get what you're saying there, and it's I, I realize it's a, it's a tricky issue because everybody's wanting to do the right thing and be inclusive but not be so broad that nobody knows what we're talking about. <laughs> so yeah. so is it just to add for now, uh, so that it would read for individuals of communities um, who have historically been disproportionately impacted. Does that work for you? Yeah, I mean that, so that gets at more of the communities of color. It, it doesn't get at the individual who was incarcerated and may have been set back in life who who is white or some you know so i don't know right. so i can say individuals or individuals of communities so i could have both could you say or or people who were previously incarcerated with a cannabis charge conviction a conviction 
I think we're talking about individuals from that category and groups of people where we know their entire community was harmed and lost resources and, and lost access to the, these kinds of legal opportunities to engage in this market because of racial discrimination. That's, I, I think there's, and so one is a very individual, yes, this person didn't suffer from institutionalized discrimination, but they were set back in life because they were incarcerated because of marijuana. And these were folks who were set back as a community because of the racialized nature of incarceration. Yeah, so you could have the community piece and then you could say something about individuals who are directly uh, impacted or some, you know, something like that and just focus on the individuals. Okay, so you can't say who were previously incarcerated. You, I don't know, there's something about that that makes me feel like you, by being that specific without going through and thinking of all the circumstances, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, I think that makes raised it, over I time, too, it might too be- narrow. It might be too narrow. I don't know, but it makes me a little uncomfortable that maybe you're un unintentionally keeping somebody out that you want to be considered. I thought we were trying to use like the Benning rule where it was like one thing to be arrested and another thing to be incarcerated or something. <laughs> but, um, that was kind of the example that right? is, you know, some people have been able, a lot of young people get arrested for this. And if they have different legal representation, there's a really big difference between who goes to jail and who has the sort of means to carry on with their lives. Well, you don't need to say have been incarcerated, but you could say convicted, previously convicted of a, of, of, of. Arrest. I, would leave, I would leave it more general. I would not go down that road. No, I would say negatively impacted or something like that. Unjustly negatively impacted. I wouldn't be too specific. Yeah, yeah I, I, I do think you should at this point without, have, you know, this is such a big discussion. I think you should be a little more general just at, at this point. I think it's going to, over time, it's going to get refined. But my concern is thinking about, and, and again, just like what Keisha, Keisha was talking about is, so, you know, two people get arrested for the same crime and they have different backgrounds, different resources, different, you know, let's say it's a young person, different parental in involvement, things like that. It might not be that it, you know, you could take the conviction out of it. And uh, my kid is gonna, I'm all over that, right? I'm a lawyer. I know the criminal justice system. I'm hiring a lawyer. I'm getting my kid out of that. You have another child who um, maybe doesn't have uh, the parental support at home. They don't have financial resources. They don't show up for the uh, arraignment. Then there's arrest warrant put out for them. Um, then they get conditions of release set because they didn't show up for the arraignment and then they violate the conditions of release. And then, all, I mean, I don't need to explain the whole criminal mm -hmm system to you, but you know, you have circumstances like that where somebody may get in a whole lot of, of, of mess that really is hard and disadvantages them, but maybe there's no, not ever any conviction, but the, you know, the failure to appear and the violation of conditions and all that other kind of stuff winds up having a significant impact on them. So I, you just, I think you just want who, to give some room there for the board to be able to flesh that out a little more. Yeah. Well, as I, we have this discussion and I feel like this captures some of the intent of what, of what I, you know, I haven't been here for past intent conversations. So what you just named Michelle is exactly what I'm intending that there's just a really big difference between how people are treated in the judicial system. Sure. Right. There's a you know, vastly different. Right. right. And also just so you know, is that um, in terms of, cannabis possession, nobody gets incarcerated in Vermont for that. I and mean, haven't, and haven't for several years. Right, I mean, you know, maybe somebody has been or, or is now, but it's, you know, there's other charges, maybe somebody, they found cannabis on someone when they were arresting them for a violation of an APO, right? Mm -hmm. And so the misdemeanor, possession gets tacked on, but that's not really the reason they're incarcerated. Mm -hmm. um, and so, I, you know, I haven't checked lately, but I have pretty consistently over the last few years checked with the crime 
I can, I can't even remember their changing name, the crime research group that kind of helps us with data. And um, each time I've checked over the last several years, there's been no one incarcerated for, right. pos for, for cannabis possession, um, you know, like a standalone charge or like the reason why they are there is because right. of I, I never, I, what I didn't, I get that. What I didn't think we were doing was making it specific to Vermont in any way that they could have been set back by this kind of oh, sure in all yeah. the country, which has been vastly different, you know, depending on which state. No, that's a good point. Yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't thinking of that. Um, I, I don't think anywhere in the bill we say it had to be related to Vermont, you know, because no. A lot right. of people come here because they're like, wow, people are nicer here, you know, uh, and, and less likely to convict you of this kind of charge um, if they had a bad experience somewhere else. Right, right. Okay, so I'll tweak, I'll tweak that stuff and I'll email, uh, you know, I'll think about the ways to, because I, I won't be able to see you before, uh, Senate Judiciary takes this stuff up. I think what I'll do is, I don't know what I'll do. Um, uh, uh, if you just do any of the drafting changes we've talked about and send it to Jeanette, she'll be the one presenting it with you tomorrow in Senate Judiciary. Do you, do you uh, think she's gonna be back tomorrow? You know well, what? Allison thinks let, so. Let me, let me just give her a ring and see how she's feeling. Oh, oh, oh I'll put myself on mute and see how she's Um, but 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 uh, Michelle, if if Jeanette's not here tomorrow, can you just present it to the committee? Sure. Yeah. And you don't. We don't need to be there. No. Okay. No. But I mean, the only issue there is um, when I was telling them about some of the other things that you had already decided on. Uh, you know, say, so, well, well, why, why did they do that? Or why do they want to do that? And right. I, I can explain, you know, from my perspective, what I, what I heard from you, but I, I don't, you know. Well, I trust you. I think you, that'd be fine. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, I mean, it's just because the bill had, they have to vote it out tomorrow, right? They do. And they are, you know, waiting to get your recommendations and, um, and then Senate Ag is working on some stuff too, and um, right. they're going to have me back tomorrow morning um, to work on some recommendations for Senate Judiciary as well. So it's been all cannabis all day for me and Brian. Oh right, I forgot because we sit on Ag. Right, I wasn't with you guys this morning. Um, oh, was that this morning? She's a crow. I know, I know my days just completely blend together lately. So, <laughs> um, okay. So I was just trying to go back to the highlighted. I think so we, we've got that taken care of. And then the date you decided on October 15th right. and the positions is just again, something I, I'll, I'll take a look at what Allison said with respect to um, S79 and I'll I'll get the information from JFO about just confirmation that that it is three uh I think classified uh full-time positions, but I'm not sure. Um and then I'll add that language. And then what I'll do is then send that off to y'all um as soon as I can get that drafted up and um and I'll send it to the whole committee and then um, I'm happy to present it tomorrow if Jeanette's not uh, back. Yeah, it, she's still pretty wiped out. I spoke to Bill. She mm -hmm. is, um, so I would just suggest you send it to her, whatever you get and, and just let her know what our plan is. And then okay. she's up to it, you'll, you guys okay. will do it together. And if not, you're gonna go for it. Sure. Yeah, and I think as you've said many times here, this bill's still got a, a lot of places to go and there's a long road. So there's lots of places you can tweak it as a, you know, um, while it's still in the Senate. Yeah, and Good. Yeah, so thank you. Before we, before we wrap up, I know Virginia Renfrew has been waiting, sitting patiently listening to this. I have no idea if you have any comments you wanna make, Virginia. <laughs> 
No, uh, <laughs> thanks for the invite. Um, I think I think it all looks great. Okay. All right. If there's no more questions or comments, I'm more than willing to adjourn the meeting. So moved. Okay. I think that's, Mich thank you. Thank you.